All right, here we go. Dagon versus Dagon, a monster mirror. As we have uh, Bitsy on the top and Hellfinder at the bottom, and we see... We're looking at Hellfinder's hand right now. Pretty diverse, right off the bat. Like, it doesn't look that bad. Even though Beckett's just in mirror, he may want it for the late game. But he has one crone only. I always draw all of them. And double Selene Harpy as well. What do you think about this? No, it looks like a pretty solid hand. A little bit. I do like the uh, crone ditch there, uh, picking up Siri yeah. instead. Uh, it, it almost looked like too good of a hand. I always feel like you can get that sometimes <laughs> where you're just like, man, this hand's perfect. But you got to remember that it's round one. And you still have to have cards to, like, draw out your opponent's cards in round one. You can't just have, you know, yeah. all of your end game. Um, Bitsy's uh, hand is not looking as great, though, as he does have um, not only double fog, but double crones. And he may want to replace, like, you can make a case for keeping one crone, even though it's better to just use it in the late game. But you got to be careful about, you know, drawing into that foglet at the very end. But he, uh, both players have managed to prevent this, as they have a rather similar lineup here, as Hellfinder does lose a coin flip and leads off with the fog on the melee row, putting the foglets out of the deck as well. I think this is going to be one matchup where losing that coin flip is going to hurt, because obviously we have the benefit of seeing both players' hands, but uh, the double fogs in both, the single arch griffin in both, uh, it's going to be interesting to see who can get these foglets to actually stick, and if, on Bitsy's side, if he really wanted to commit to this round of Woodland Spirit. The big difference here is Hellfinder with the double Seleno Harpy. Uh, if he does manage to win this round, that carryover strength could translate it to 12... Uh, you know, strength overall. As he leads off with the Arch Griffin right off the bat, that's his. That's one of the two resources for him to remove weather. Gone. Uh, a little bit early, but maybe he he really wants to. I mean, this this uh, Wyvern is actually not bad at all. Even though he lost the coin flip, he can actually get the full Brave value out of this. No, nope. Wyvern, that Brave value. Oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah. He oh, yeah, yeah, he does, he does. Oh, he does. Yeah, yeah. No, that, uh, does. <laughs> that, that Wyvern's gotten me a few times where it's just like, all right, it does two damage. Why is it dealing five? And that Brave tag on there is definitely something yeah. to watch out for. Um, but no, so that Arch Griffin coming down maybe a little too soon, I agree. We do have, obviously, we see the leader ability still uh, in use. Dagon uh, available for that extra fog just in case, but... Uh, it did had him did set him up very nicely for the seven value versus if he did go with the fog, uh, only the six from the foglets. But you know, it, it does seem a little early, and we hear see possibly think about the arch griffin. Oh, not the arch griffin, the Salino harpies uh, instead, trying to set up for yeah. it, putting him ahead in this round while setting up for that carryover value for next. Yep, dropping the Selena Harpy on the range row and opting to not remove the weather as fast as Bitsy did, preserving that Arch Griffin for later, knowing that in this matchup, uh, it's a very valuable resource and you're gonna, you're 100% gonna use that card, you're 100% gonna need him, but it's, it can be very key to preserve it for later down the line. It can also be very good to surprise your opponent because once you remove that fog, you also take out the foglet, so it can lead to a more of a surprise uh, swing than in other matchups. As we see Bitsy here opting to go with a Frightener and uh, dropping both of the eggs onto the Fog, but the Wyvern body is blocking them from going away as of now. But this may uh, bait out the Arch Griffin from Hellfinder, as it does. I was going to say that uh, I don't believe, I believe that it's still Random Rose on the Frightener, but both yes, the eggs is. landing up in the Fog. They weren't going to immediately die, but uh, that Wyvern can only protect them for so long. Uh, now the benefit of going with the Arch Griffin clear here is that even if it, the row does get refogged, it's going to take quite a bit of time before those uh, eggs actually get in danger. 24 point lead for Hellfinder. I think Hellfinder is okay with going down minus two this game because he does have Siri in his hand. And taking the first round with Siri alongside the carryover of the eggs can give him a very powerful uh, strength status to that can be very difficult for, to uh, for Betsy for over, you know to overcome in like at least one card. So even though he's threatened by going down uh, minus two, I think he can definitely afford it at this stage of the game. And Bitsy. Uh, getting Roach out of the deck, so he's running Roach in this list as he drops the Woodland Spirit, which is a card that you tend to see in round three from Monster, going down round one and bringing him much closer. Ga closing that gap, actually, by... Uh, how, how much was that? 19 strength? Like, that was a very strong swing. 19 strength Woodland Spirit, for sure. But we see these... It's an interesting mix of incentives here, because looking at both hands... We see Siri in not only Hellfinder's hand, but also Bitsy's hand. So even being yep. down that 22, uh, 23, whatever that number actually ended up being, strength, he still wants to win this round or at least play Siri. And because of that, yeah. he tries to go for as much tempo as he can, making sure that he can stay in this round. 
Very early kills from... Okay, so both both players going with the Wilder Spirit uh, in round one. As he gets the Foggles back in there and moves up to 21 strength over Bitsy. But ke keep in mind, obviously, he's two cards behind. Uh, so Bitsy does have the ability to catch up, especially with that Wyvern in hand, which is basically an 11 strength bronze. Even though... No, yeah, he does have target with it in this scenario. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how far both players push. Uh, Bitsy does have that Caretaker, which is rather useless in this round. So that's kind of a card you can count out of the equation, at least. Unless he was like a very low value out of it. Uh, opting to go with the Wyvern here. I'm probably going to target the Selena Harpy. No, the Arse Griffin instead, because he wants that Fog to rack up the damage uh, faster so he can get rid of the eggs. I'm not even sure if it's that. You mentioned the uh, mostly dead Caretaker. That is reasonably another way of clearing that Fog. <laughs> If he steals the Arch Griffin. Ah, yeah, because yeah, now the Arch Griffin is gone. Yep, yep, true. <laughs> Not so unvaluable anymore. But it's it, a round that where both players want to go very deep. It's an interesting placement on the Slano Harpy going for the same row as before and still in the fog. I'm not sure. I like that. that. He, he, wa he wants to block that. He wants to block the fog from... He wants the eggs to remain as, uh, as you know, around as possible. Like, that that fog, um, that Selena Harpy into the fog row uh, gives... Uh, those eggs, two turns of lifespan, but I don't think that's going to be enough as he's going to go for the Frightener now. So maybe he's baiting out the uh, replace here as he draws it to one of the crone pieces. He's still in the lead, so he does require one card out of Bitsy if he wants to win this round. But then, like, no matter what he does here, he has to play Siri. So those eggs are going to go down anyways, but they're going to go down simultaneously, providing him with a very potentially a strong swing in his favor because each one of those eggs is going to convert into a three strength unit. So. That could enable him to actually oh, get even more of a... Oh, there's a Siri, though. There it is. Winning the coin flip and dropping Siri. Feels good, man. Well, no, Vitsy definitely in a bit of a stronger position here, at least as far as cards are concerned. However, we've got Hellfinder still really wanting to win this round. Look at his hand. We've got Crones that he doesn't really want to play this round. Siri, which is going to be useless for because he really needs to play something else on the... Siege row in order to make sure that he still has that carryover value because otherwise it's going to be six strength and nothing. Uh, it's tough. It, it's a very precarious position that Hellfinder finds himself in. If you put if you play Woodland Spirit and Crones round one, like you lose so much power for the third round. He's going to opt to pass with Siri in hand. That feels so bad. That feels so bad, but at least he got Siri out of his opponent as well. But going down round one on Nikhil Karste is just not good. Even though he is going to be able to translate 12 strength into this round, his opponent gets translate six, so it's not even that big of an advantage. Very, very nice uh, beginning of the match for Bitsy right here. Now, when Hellfighter does manage to carry over more strength than Bitsy, which will be a little bit helpful since at least he's not going to be completely forced out of this round. He, he's yeah. not risking going down any more card advantage if it's a pass True. or pass. Oh, not a good replace, though. <laughs> oh, not a luck just day, hanging bro. out. Yep. Oh, boy. The, the thing is, because he... he uh, because he drew another crone piece and he replaced it to another one, he couldn't even... Uh, opt to mulligan Siri away, which does limit his options this round. This round, uh, Bitsy is not aware of it, perhaps, but uh, if Hellfinder gets pressured enough, he's going to lose all his power for the next, uh, for the final round, which is the determining one. So it's going to be very key to see how, how much Bitsy is willing to push here, as that Selena Harpy is very strong, as it's going to translate all that power to the round that matters the most. As he has a four uh, strength lead over his opponent and just develop fog on the seas row, which can also affect the crones as well. As we see Hellfinder reply with his own fog, trying to get rid of those eggs so that they're not a problem to, uh, to him in the next round. Uh, very tight situation right now, actually. Oh, it's for sure. I think Bitsy, if he recognizes it, and there's not been any indicators on Hellfinder's side yet, but I'm actually not sure if Hellfinder can simply outpoint value Bitsy this round. Uh, depending on how long this round goes, that Becker Twist and Mirror is just sitting there with no one strength units. Mm -hmm. Those Selena uh, Harpy eggs on Bitsy's side really denying the card any value. Um, double Crones oh. versus the singular Crone in Bitsy's hand, forcing out the Dagon here uh, just to get those uh, Oclets back, but I'm simply not sure if there's enough points available for Hellfinder to actually win this round. The only way Hellfinder makes it out of this is if Bitsy stops pressuring him. Uh, if you if you were to pass now, you would have a chance. But he, like, why pass when you have a, a blood killing roar in hand that can capitalize? 
uh, on your father. You still haven't used Dagon, so you can bring them back out, and your options are just so limited. This feels so bad. Your Crones are weakened. Your Necker Warrior is a set of cards that you don't need now because it's only going to provide you with five strength. Your Becker Swiss and Mirror is completely and utterly useless unless you like, you know, swapping bears with eggs, but that's pretty much all you're going to get out of that. Uh, this could be a 2 0, ladies and gentlemen. This could be a 2 0. If Fissy a very strong con- start continues for that pressure, he still has the uh, first light in hand as well to clear this guy's yet again, ensuring yep. that nothing actually dies on his range throw. Uh, this is. And also clearing the Foglis as well, just weakening him even more. Oh, man. I am seeing zero way of actually getting value off of this Becker's Twist of Mirror and those double crones just hanging out way too close to the top of the deck. Well, it seemed to be like such a similar uh, open hand for both players, and it's turned out to be such a lopsided game. Very, very interesting outcome here. That rain is utterly devastating. Not even going for the clear skies, not even needing to. Uh, at this point, Hellfinder has no choice. He has to play the crones here. Actually, and he loses I'm, his win condition. I'm wondering if that uh, he does lose the win condition, but if he's just trying to make it back to the round, we are going to see a one heck of a dice roll if he can hit that. Uh, that harpy is going to go down to one, possibly enabling. Oh, he severe. could. <laughs> oh, he could go for it. I mean, what are the odds? The odds are like. 18 percent. What? What is that even? It's, like that's lower than 20 percent. I'm thinking one in seven. Uh, one oh, in, no! Man doesn't get it. <laughs> There's a 2 0. Oh, wow. <laughs> what a dominant performance by Bitsy. Man. Oh, that feels bad. Oh, but no, as you mentioned, both players with very similar starting hands, and I think this might be simply a testament to just how powerful uh, an Assyrian opening hand with winning the coin flip can be. <laughs> Look at and, this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, a triple. <laughs> and Roach to top it off. Oh, man. Was that Hellfinder's hand again? Uh, no, that was uh, Bitsy's hand, I believe. Okay, that was Bitsy. Okay, so Bitsy with a little bit of a handicap there. Oh, my Lord. I, I haven't drawn that bad <laughs> ever. Uh, as we see, uh, decent looking hand here for Hellfinder, it seems. Uh, no, well, no gold, actually. He does have a, a few silvers there. And Double Necker Warrior. He's running Double Necker Warrior in this list. As uh, he's really. Um, Pointing us at the coin flip, mm, he's like, he's not yeah, too yeah, happy we, to be we, losing we that twice in a row. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we I feel you, Hellfinder, I feel you, bruh. It's, it, it sucks. It's life. Well, uh, there, oh, he just immediately goes for the uh, John Calvey, despite the fog being in there, hoping to get something, perhaps an Imperial Brigade to block the fog, because otherwise he's gonna look at six damage uh, in the next, at the beginning of his next turn, which is not something you want to deal with. <clears throat> Sorry. It's not something you want to deal with at the beginning as Nilf guard as he goes for the Impera, uh, sorry, the emissary there and pulls a raw tosser. Oh man. Oh man, that's actually like yes, you're threatening that row, but you're gonna take six damage next turn to the Impera Golems, and that's nothing that's not good because you lose a lot of the value of your tempo. Like that that's even worse than you know, next uh, <laughs> nerfed Impera Golems. <laughs> no, that is uh Definitely a hit on Bitsy's side. However, even if he does end up losing the strength purely from the Empirical, uh, we're looking at zero points in two turns on Hellfinder's side of the board. So if he yes. has going to struggle to try and catch up with this. Um, however, those being behind, he is set up for the uh, Wyvern play. Wyvern, I believe, is targeting an enemy, not a unit. So that's not going to help him much. He has no way to deal with this Kyle Carcass, which is going to give... Uh... Uh, Bitsy quite a bit of information. I mean, Bitsy himself, unless he pulls it with Joaquim, has no way of getting out of the raw toss or onto the board. As we see Ragnarok there in his hand, that Ragnarok could be very threatening because he had, we see no clear. We only see Arch Griffin uh, from Hellfinder. Even though he's threatening to lose the Foglets here, he does have another Impenetrable Fog in hand, so I don't think it's going to be as big of a deal for him. As this time around, uh, I'm not sure. I guess he's just going to opt to... He's just going to opt to... Uh, work for the buildup, even though he did lose the coin flip, and now he's going to be a total of uh, 11 strengths behind, which he can cover with the Wyvern, so uh, he would go on that minus two, but he couldn't do that. He can cover not only with Wyvern, but uh, with that many additional Foglets in the graveyard, or in the deck, rather. Um, <laughs> Anzarella coming out, capitalizing on that strength advantage, turning it into card advantage, um, but that uh, is just a single kind of Fog. Antarela is going to be extremely beneficial in simply catching up. Uh, it, it actually turns his fog into a fairly high tempo play. It does, and 
it, it, it's it's tough. That control is tough because it's not like Hellfinder can actually reply that with his own spy, as he cannot really afford to go down in strength like that. And this Ragnarug is going to be even more powerful because of the placement of that Cantrell. I think him for a total of nine damage. And Hellfinder has no way to answer this entirely. He has an Arch Griffin in his hand, which will clear weather in one row, but the other two rows will not be affected. Uh, this, oh man, this is actually really tough for him because of that Cantarella and him losing the coin flip here. He, we could be looking at a pass and him losing round one. Oh no, never mind. Sorry, I didn't see the uh, the water hack. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> what? No. Ah! I didn't see that. Derp. It is so easy to overlook the lonely water water hag just being able to completely shut down uh, Ragnarok. Yeah, I, never mind. I think that, uh, oh, I, I'm pretty sure I remember that happening. Um, yeah. No, so we... Just because see... water hack clears skies, people. It's obviously, like, oh, man. <laughs> Imperitable Fog there, drop, wow, look at all the Foglets though, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, giving up, bringing up to th uh, 34 strength, 10 over uh, Bitsy here, still one card behind every turn, that Kendrilla just felt so, so strong, but now maybe he's easing out into a situation in which he can reply with his own spy, but I don't think he's quite there yet, uh, those Foglets... Very excited. Like, he has to preserve his weather because he has to use the power of the Foglets for the third round as well. And looking at his deck, he still has uh, the Will of the Spirit, but that's pretty much... Oh, he has another Imperitable Fog in his deck as well. So he still has two more sources of weather. He draws another Crone, though. Very, oh, very bad. Man, Hellfinder not, not the luckiest today. At least not in this set of matches. Like, damn. Nope, he is having Twice in a row. difficulty finding the cards that he's looking for and... As I said those uh those crones just like hanging out together up near the top of the deck sometimes and it's not what you want whenever you're trying to do your mulligans and your draws. Uh I'm looking again that lost coin flip and Siri in hand for Bitsy. This is just looking to be a how much are you willing to invest into this round knowing that you're just going to be getting bled out next. Yep. It's definitely very bad. Like, it's also, it must feel very frustrating for Hellfinder now because it's twice that that Freiner has drawn him a Crone uh, component when he already had one in hand, uh, which is just utterly devastating. That Beggar's Twister Mirror, because of the damage dealt prior with the Fog after he developed the Freiner, is completely useless yet again at this point of the match, at the very least. And he doesn't have any plays to make here. Like... What do you do? You've already brought out the Foglets, and you're 13 points behind. You have two uh, Crone pieces in your hand, and are you really going to go for that? Because if you go for the Crones, uh, like, if you go for the Egg Strength Crone, you are going to get in the lead. But is it worth it? Like, you, you can't oh, push you can, much after that. You can always go for the Crones and reveal that you still have a Crone in hand and hope that your opponent takes mercy on you. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a plan. <laughs> but no, this oh, fog is just never. I, hand, though. I, this is just such an awkward position to be in, not wanting to lose the round. Um, oh, looks like we had uh, an issue with the recording. Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was my computer for a second. <laughs> okay, there we go. Again, these are pre-recorded matches. Uh, thanks. <laughs> we are very grateful to the players who not only participated, but also recorded their matches for us to be able to cast them on top of it for you. Um, I mean, it's a, I, this will we'll be never short of uh, some technical hiccups every now and then, but I, I agree. We're looking at just so many dead cards or not enough point value cards in hand for Hellfinder. This Crone coming down will put him in the lead once again. We're looking at an easily, I believe it's a, with Trimmer is 19 value um, from the... Maximum, yes. Uh, I'm forgetting his name. Van Hamar. Van Hamar. Um, Van Hamar. At this point, I think he's given Mr. up on Garrett. clearing the skies. <laughs> Yeah, the hammer's gonna go down here. Gonna drop the Van Hanuk and gonna put him in a tremendous lead. Uh, gonna force him to. No, actually, gonna go for the. Uh, this makes a lot of sense actually, because he's gonna clear off the Foglets, and I expected more of a lead than that, but still a ten strength lead uh, with Bitsy being able to pull. But if you go for that, you, I, I mean, you haven't drawn a single gold yet, though. You could draw into series, so I think he really wants to push this round. Going for the Fog yet again, this time targeting the Seizro, which I really like. 
because he's going to be able to uh, gather more strength immediately uh, out of him as he has three targets there for the next round to hit with the fog. As Vicovaro Medic, what targets does Vicovaro Medic have this game? Um, what, what targets does he have available I, right now? At the I'm not sure. Point, I'm actually not sure. I've lost track of what has actually died. I think it later later rounds, uh, Wyvern is not a bad target. Arch Griffin's not a bad target either. But we're looking at only a 15-point lead on Hellfinder's side with the possibility of playing an additional 7. But he's simply out of possible cards to play to get ahead on points. Uh, but this, well, uh, he, has, he has Arch, Arch Griffin still. Like that, that Azir is probably not what he wanted to develop, but he does know that after playing the Arch Griffin, he does get one point ahead of him. But that Azir blocks the fog, which is the biggest deal here. That 20 strength uh, will make it so that he sponges up the hits every turn. So he's only going to be losing two strength. And even though it's kind of tight at this point, because Becca Twisted Mirror is useless. But Vicar Medic, I don't think it has that many targets as well. And I'm pretty sure Bitsy is looking to use Siri. Hmm. Okay, he's going to use it now, it seems. I mean, he, you have to go for it now. You have to play Siri now. You can't, you solidify the win. You're going to win the... Like, winning the game, winning the round, uh, in such... At, at this point, where both of you are left with one card, is a tremendous deal. Because you're going to be drawing very few resources from this point onwards. You can get one uh, card out of your opponent, since there's no carryover, as the three Selena Harpies are in his deck. And you're in a very favorable position here. Let's see what targets he has with uh, Vicar Bar Medic, though, because I'm not sure what he has in the graveyard. He has four cards, but I'm not sure what well, they are. Two of those are <laughs> fogs, um, so there's already half the deck uh, or half of the graveyard. But we do see the Siri getting forced out, which I think, if you're in Hellfinder's position, classic. you've managed to at least if you're going to lose this round, you've lost it by not only getting back that uh, coin flip, you're losing on equal cards, but you're losing mm -hmm. it from drawing out the Siri as well. So you're not worried about that threat looming over you from next round. Uh, definitely a or position for Hellfinder. I bet at this point he's wishing that Becker's Twisted Mirror was literally any other card in his deck just to be able to play something. Yeah. Uh, three points worth would have been enough to force out the remaining card. Um, but not the worst uh, round one overall. Forcing out uh, three of the gold cards from Bitsy, including the Cantarella, without being able to replay the Roach. So already a lot of that strength that was going to be coming in future rounds simply does not exist. Uh, the draws here not terribly. He ditches that Becker's twisted here as quickly as he can. <laughs> as he draws into Gels and Seleno Harpy. Actually, these draws are pretty decent considering the stage of the game right here. You just play a Seleno Harpy uh, to get that carryover for the next round, which is a, a total of six strength, which is not that bad. And uh, you got Gels and the that Wyvern though. He may have to replace it because because of his carryover strength, you're not gonna be as like, it's not going to be as easy, as easy to get off the uh, Brave Tag. And without the Brave Tag, uh, Wyvern is just an 8-strength play. But you may have to replace Siri here because Siri is actually weaker than the Wyvern. So not the greatest pull for him. Uh, what does he need at this point, though? He definitely needs the Will of the Spirit. Well, I think like, obviously, point, he's looking for either of his remaining gold cards just to guarantee it off the gills. Yeah. Uh, switching out yeah. the Wyvern for a Fog, not terrible. I do like the idea of keeping the Siri here. The Wyvern was technically one point better in the most common scenario where he's not able to get that Brave Tag off. Uh, however, keeping Siri is a 7 strength gold body. You don't have to worry about that uh, strength being messed with typically by your opponent. Dropping the Raw Tosser on the C's row as uh, I think this is a round where we see... Uh, impenetrable fog from Hellfinder, preserving Gales for the very last. Um, unless he wants to pull the Regis potentially and eat something valuable from his opponent, but at this point he's played two raw tossers, so he may. Hmm. Let's see what he opts to do. He's gonna go for Regis here. I mean, you you have to go for Regis. The Becca's of Samara is completely useless. Interesting for him to go for. He's preserving the fog for the very end, so it's it's fortunate for him to, that he pulled Regis. So he, it's not like kind of productive him pulling the Willis Spirit and the fog. Uh, it does check uh, his tracker to see which uh, bronze cards are reasonably left. And there's probably an Elf Guardian Knight stuck in there, but maybe not. Uh, pulling that last Rot Tosser. Need the Rot Tosser. Yeah, I mean, I mean, technically, it makes sense, but the Nausicaa Standard Bear is also very devastating for him, potentially. So he's got to be careful here. Well, actually, Bitsy, like the, uh, sequencing his key. This may have actually worked out even more in his favor for Hellfinder, since he did find the Regis instead of the uh, Woodland Spirit. 
and he does have the fog left. If that Raw Tosser was still in Bitsy's deck, that could have been a Vikovar medic onto an emissary in order to pull it. Yeah. And with the card this, advantage, this is actually, this actually is, very tight. Yep. Oh, this is this is very tight. Because he's like 30 points, and that, that fog is going to translate into 7 fog lifts, which is 14 points, and it's going to wither down whatever uh, row he goes for. The Kahir goes down, looking at the last two cards of his deck, and he pulls the Nausicaa Standard Bear before the fog goes out. Uh, does he? He doesn't have another one of those in the graveyard, does he? Uh, no. Not in his oh, opponent's doesn't. graveyard, I don't think. Oh, but he man. He did have what hit in his deck. Uh, I don't know if that was the right timing. Oh no! Oh man, that could. Oh, that could lose in the match. Well, I think that he, he has to go for. Looked... He has to go for the fog on the range road because he, he's. Pro yeah, he has to go. Yeah, that's where he has to set it. <laughs> okay. Okay, twenty-two point lead. Can he cover this? Uh, he oh no, no, he has the arch. Has the arch oh, no, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Did I? Did oh wow, wow, what a game! <laughs> Not bad. Yeah, we completely forget about that. <laughs> uh, my sure defense is like it's like midnight year. for me. <laughs> <laughs> and Peter there used to on his own unit there to give him nine points ahead. Very nice game by Bitsy. Two zero over Hellfinder. Hellfinder one game away from going down three to nil. Let's see if he opts to <laughs> he opts to draw a little bit better this time around. <laughs> damn. Those crones just did not want to participate. No, every now and then those mulligans are just not what you're looking for. But uh, no, that last game and so many things just happening. I actually lost track. Uh, so let's see if I can yeah. uh, keep up a little bit better this game. We do have um, the Skellige. Sorry, there we go. Coming out from Hellfinder in this case. Uh, I believe it's self I understand. Uh, both Savage Bears coming down, I actually didn't get it. Man, talking about trying to pay more attention, I actually didn't see what uh, matchup we're in. We have Novgorod versus Skellige, and double Savage Bear in the hands of... As you, I'm still only getting one of them away. Savage Bear, uh, still, to this point, it does count as the Vigoro Medic, <laughs> even though it's going to change with the upcoming patch, and that looks uh, Hellfire a very uh, strong hand. Once again, losing the coin flip and points it out immediately. <laughs> just You can feel that frustration uh, mounting. But no, the uh, early Savage Bear makes a lot of sense here. Nilfgaard doesn't have too many ways of actually clearing the bear besides Rot Tossers. And you have, uh, already we can see it in hand, two of the Hunters ready to hit some bears if they have to. And possible decoy oh. as well. But no, you want to get that thinking about leading off the Rot Tosser there. Yep. He was thinking about leading off the Rot Tosser, but ultimately yeah. decided to go with the Calvade right off the bat. Uh, taking the three damage on the golems, making them into a six strength swing into, instead of nine, and drops Cantarella to furthermore, like, that just, Cantarella feels so powerful uh, when Nofgar plays it against you and you lose the coin flip. Like, it just, Wait, you feel like you're... Uh, essentially, Hellfinder has started the game off a card down and up four points and then has to play again. Uh, this is such a yep. powerful move from Nilfgaard at this point. The it, It's... Yep. Such an awkward position to be in, plus the more card in hand, so you can't even grab him from the uh, rock. Uh, if he is running uh, check his deck, I actually don't think I see an Olgeard in here either, so the next highest thing is a Hunter? Possibly an Armor Smith, I'm not sure on the uh, Strength thing. Actually, I think currently it's tied between the uh, Hunters and the Shieldsmiths. Yeah, they, they both have the, the, the veteran tag, and they uh, get buffed simultaneously as he drops more Vark right there. Uh, not up to do, not not able to pull it off with his own leader and getting this plus three strength boost. As we do see the first Rot Tosser uh, drop in this matchup, Rot Tossers are very easily answered by Skellige, Borkvar Hunters, uh, Shield Maidens, etc. They, they have multiple ways of pinging at them, even the long ships as well. Even though we only see two Borkvar Hunters. Uh, in Hellfinder's hands, so he has to be very, very cautious with them. As if he loses ways to deal with the raw tossers, it can start. They can start dealing a lot of damage, especially considering he has a Cantrell in the range row, and we see no ranged card uh, in Hellfinder's hand. Hellfinder's hand is, is seems a little bit awkward. I'm I'm intrigued about that marching orders. Uh, it seems to be there to target the priests of Freya. Basically, I, I guess it's there to enhance his chances of getting a resurrection in the later rounds. As it's a little bit useless as of right now, though, unless he loses a unit. Well, Hellfinder, I think, just wanting to continue his streak of ensuring that he has at least one silver special card that does nothing for him round one. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. But no, his hand overall looking okay, besides the fact that he's currently going two cards down. I He has enough power to fight in this round, but he's lacking any decent carryover for the future ones. Uh, all three yeah. Shieldsmiths still in the deck, both Light Longships still in the deck. Uh, it, it simply doesn't have many ways of... In, you can He can probably fight for this round and win for this, for this round, uh, just looking at both hands. But it's not really a round that is providing him any additional benefit down the line. Um, at best, we're looking at a, a five-value carryover on Morkvar. There's simply no way of increasing that base power. How how is he how is he going to win this round though? Because, like, how what cards does he play at this point? He has the Gremist. Like, you can you can utilize the Gremist now to uh, utilize the Blood Curling Roar on that Cow Carcass, right? And you do have Decoy, so, but. Barring countering stuff like that, he doesn't have the best targets for the Gremist anyways, and Bitsy has a very strong looking hand right there with the pair of brigades, double emissaries to get some chains going on, like, and he has, he has two cards over him and is not that far up behind. Uh, as you have to go for the Blood Curling Roar there, capitalizing on the Car Carcass and dropping a bear, giving him a 22 point lead, but still, keep in mind he's two cards below his opponent, so his opponent has the ability to catch up very easily here, especially with another Impera Brigade in hand in double emissary, like this is, this is looking bad for Hellfinder, like his hand is very limited, his hand is very, uh, it's, oh, and that Nifgardian Knight is very strong there. That emissary into of Guardian Knight is very nice. Revealing Peter, which is not really that big of a deal. Uh, even though Peter's not that good in this matchup, you know, in worst case scenario, you can use it to weaken Morkvark. Mm -hmm. Or you can just use it to just banish the Gremis, for example, uh, if you don't want it to decoy it. Uh, but barring that, like, it can be used to buff something of yours that has taken a big hit. But in this case, there's no really valid target for it. Uh, well, currently Hellfinder is up 12 points. I don't see any easy way of get, making that up from uh, Bitsy's hand. However, he definitely still wants to continue playing this simply because the Siri in hand. We do see the Siri in Bitsy's hand as well. Bitsy just doing extremely well at uh, not only winning coin flips, but drawing Siri early on. <laughs> and here we see that... Uh, He's still... Ooh, the Rotasser. Interesting. The that Rotasser donor actually eases steel. up his... Uh, yeah, sorry, the, the, that Rotasser like eases up the uh, the marching orders. Like you can actually get a Priestess of Freya out and uh, threaten, for example, the back row there uh, for ten value, which is not bad. Nope, and I think at this point it looks like Hellfinder is trying to find a way of simply out tempoing Bitsy enough that Bitsy just concedes the round. But with the Siri in hand still, until we see that come out. Uh, I don't think Bitsy really wants to give up this round, uh, for, even for two-card advantage. He wants to try and force out as much as he can from uh, Hellfinder, and I'm wondering if it might be the Siri coming down that will finally solidify this round for Hellfinder, because he, he doesn't really want to pass until he plays Siri, but you don't really want to play Siri when you're close to 30 points ahead at this point. The clock is ticking, and there goes Siri. There goes Siri, pouring Roach out of there, getting him 12 points behind Hellfinder. Still one card over him, and Hellfinder does have options here. But if you uh, passing, like, this is the thing, man. Like, passing, like, losing around one card under your opponent is just pretty much a death sentence. It's really, it really bad. It feels really, really bad. Uh, and only 12 points behind, again, that same 12 points. Uh, but at this, if you're in Bitsy's shoes, do you go down that extra card if you have to? Uh, in order to try and make up those points, and I think you do. Uh, yeah, I think so you do. It, it's such an awkward position for, to be in for Hellfinder. Uh, that lost coin flip and then the early Cantarella as well, um, really putting you in an awkward spot where you have to value how important is the card advantage to you versus how important is the round, but a lot of times you're trying to build up that strength uh, for future rounds, especially with Skellige as Morkvark, and there is simply no way... I think it's a good to pass. So. I think this is a good pass. Uh, there's definitely certain things that can take it in, in one hit for him. Like, uh, there's so many ways, like Geralt Dignity and such. But as of now, in his hand, he may have to resort to Kahir to... Because the Imperial Brigade is locked, so he may have to resort to Kahir to get that huge uh, swing to enable him to win that round. Because uh, Emissary, like, there's nothing that Emissary will uh, actually pull unless he's running the likes of Vicavaro Novices to get that uh, 13 strength that he needs to overcome his opponent's strength. Uh, I think if you're Bitsy here, you're willing to go down minus one to take the first round. Uh, and if you do, you also deny 
uh, the Siri in hand. But he's actually going to opt to not do that and preserve all that power for the next round. And that's actually going to help out Hellfinder quite a bit here. Because he may be down uh, two cards, but he does have the carryover strength. And he does have Siri in his hand. Uh, as those are not bad draws at all. Nope. He, uh, but once again, they're yeah, not good. bad draws, but once again, it's lacking any way of con contributing points to future rounds. He can only yeah. play one round with this hand. Uh, this yeah. is to re get rid of the renew. The Savage Barrel come down, possibly die any Vicovaro medics if he's running them in his list. But other than that, there's not a whole lot available uh, to put pressure on Bitsy this round. Hellfinder has a hand that is very one dimensional. It is meant to play a round, and that's about all it can do. Uh, so the more he invests into this round, he simply does not have the possible carryover value going into the next. Emissary into Imperial Brigade right there. As he's only four strength above his opponent, he plays Siri here. This this strength gap is just not enough, especially with another Imperial Brigade in hand. And you're right, like the biggest swing that he has right now are the Shield Maidens. The Shield Maidens can provide him with a very... Uh, powerful tempo play for him the problem is he needs his opponent to develop something that's not an impaired brigade something that gets actually damaged when it goes into the board so they can start chaining and get that potentially uh 12 14 16 18 swing even if they get all the targets there but joaquin does not help that out as everything that he's getting onto the board is so buffed that even after the savage bear hits it uh, it's just not quite enough, except for this Bork Park Hunter right here. But this is a very strong swing for Bitsy, and it's kind of bad well, when I, you have such an advantage of your opponent in cards, too. Now with this Siri coming out, not uh, the first turn of the round, but the second, it's given Bitsy this opportunity. He's definitely capitalized on it to play as high tempo as he can to make sure that he can catch yep. up and simply... We were in a position where Bitsy would have had to have played a card anyway just to get the point value back. But now we're flipped, where as soon as Hellfinder passes, Bitsy's able to pass, and the Siri Dash will come up, or not Siri Dash, but Rayleigh Siri will come and get you that one card back, but you really want it to. Uh, and I think this is a good time to go with the Shield Maidens. The Rockfire Hunter is exactly at six. It will be the final main tempo swing of Hellfinder's hand. However, again, we're in this awkward position where Hellfinder needs carryover value. He needs to be able to win next round somehow, and if he's looking for purely card advantage, where are the points coming from next round? He has to rely on the reses. He has to rely on the, on the reses, but I mean, how many? Okay, so how many targets does he have in his graveyard? We we do see the one bear, but barring that bear, is there anything else truly relevant for him to res? Like with Sigdrifa, what what is the prime target there for him? Uh, with Sigdrifa, we're looking at possibly the uh, grimmest. Even uh, Joaquim. Maybe the Joaquim. Well, actually, Joaquim's not going to be too bad either, especially if it can pull out an additional priestess. But uh, it's. Just oh, committing further into this round, I feel like we're at almost we're getting so close to the point of no return for Hellfinder, where this is going to turn into a two zero or bust. Yep, that rock toss. <laughs> oh God, no! <laughs> oh no, that's not the. <laughs> God, that's not the old Savage Bear, bro. Oh no. Oh, that feels bad, man. Oh, uh, Savage Bear, it was already dead. It was he a carcass. betrayed him. It was it was already gone. <laughs> He ate the cow! <laughs> he ate the cow, man. He just ate it. Oh, no. Savage oh, Barry, God. just too savage. And I think with that, we are just... <laughs> here we go again. Bitsy now in the point lead. Doesn't have to go down two cards in order to win the round. It's such an awkward position for Hellfinder. And I think that misplay on the cow carcass is going to hurt him terribly uh, going into next round. Wow, he's he's back like oh oh no, that feels very bad because he could have just rested his own bear. Uh he did, didn't account for that. I mean, it was such a juicy target there with the, both of those impaired brigades like lined up perfectly. But I now, mean, the, the, the what do you do? Like you're two cards behind, and you're five points behind them. Oh, this is awful. What do you do here? I, the decoy on the rot tosser is available if he wanted to really wanted to get those eighteen points. I think that we'd see. Uh, obviously, we can see both hands, and we know that that Nausicaa uh, standard bear is going to prevent that, but yeah. there's just it, no... We've got Hellfinder struggling to make up that point advantage, and the only way he can do it... He, he's trading points for cards, and you can't do that in round two. As Skellige, you really need those points to win, and yeah. it's, it's such an 
awkward position to be in. Especially because the Skelga player uh, here in Hellfinder has won the first round. If his opponent has another Vicovaro Medic, because he's going to be going first, he can immediately steal uh, that Savage Bear from him and potentially deny him the res as how many... Uh, how many... He has one Priest of Freya left in his deck. Uh, what, what's cool about Marching Orders is that it kind of bypasses that, but this is going to be an awkward turn for Bitsy. As he doesn't have a clear play here to get in... Well, Bitsy's looking right. just to try and get a head on point value again. He yeah, doesn't want to have to spend an extra he, he have it? Once to, and I think he does. Well, why did he target them? Oh, yeah, you can't target the Mark because he's already damaged. Never mind. So no play for him available. So this this may be uh, Hellfinder's chance to actually make it to the third round with, you know, even though he's going to be one card behind, like, you can't really hope for much more than that unless you decoy Morkvar here. But how much strength would that be? Uh, Morkvar is only at a 5, so it's, you're only looking at a 5 value Morkvar. And again, the Rot Tosser, that could have easily been done the previous round uh, if he was looking for it. But it's such... A... Where are the points coming from from Hellfinder for round 3? And I don't know what he is trying to bleed out of his opponent at this point. He's going all in. He, he's like, I wanted to owe him. Uh, he, he wants it to him bad, and he's looking at a, a good target for his grief for the res here. I, I guess I guess you could say Donar is nine strength, but what what else could you fish for there? I guess I guess a Gramis. Yeah, Gramis is the best target. Resing a Gramis potentially, uh, uh, taking one of your shield maidens out and developing I mean, if he's another bear. Two, I think it's going to be Morkvar taking the axe on that one just for the most possible point value. Oh, I think you might be right through. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. Yes, because Morkvar has already been damaged, so he'll already you're not losing any. Matt's weird that's on true. that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. I'm, I'm, yep. well, I, I, don't, I don't have as much experience with Crack, but that, that's definitely the best play because if you take down Morgvar, it'll come back at full strength, and that'll be three strength than, uh, less than before. But so you're only, you're only losing the one value off of the, at that point. No, but he's going to go on the shield meter instead in the end. And he's got... Okay, so he's got, he's trying to go for the two, but this is not going to work out for him. Uh, Nazi got standard bear. is going to buff the whatever he wants to buff, really. And uh, take the hit from the team. Just eat that cow and, and die. Because unlike bears, you can't eat a plague-filled cow and expect to live. There, there he goes. Brave guy. Just went down like a champ. And this actually... Hmm. Perhaps... This may force Kahir out of him. It will force Kahir. Well, There's simply yeah. no way of making up the points otherwise. But uh, and maybe Hellfinder... Maybe I'm just misreading this. He was simply looking to bleed out every single card and rely on the two-value Mork and the uh, top deck. Oh, not gonna be though. Ragnarok does it just quite enough, just quite enough to get him ahead with one card. Azir's is 10 strength unit. Uh, his opponent has played three golds, but still has one gold left in his deck. So if he's able to draw into that gold, he can play Azir, bring uh, Roach back onto the deck, and then yeah, I mean he he gets it 100% because he has two cards left in his deck, so he just replaces that. Into wait, Rain Farm. Wait, that's his last gold. Wait, Rainforest is last gold. That is his last gold, so we are going to see the full value coming back from Roach. Uh, and possibly, depending on... Uh... He has Wretches! Wait! Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, does he lose this? Oh, I think this uh, this round three just got wait. extremely interesting. Wait, wait. If he if he brings back... He, if he breaks... No, he's getting... Oh my oh. god, this Wretches! <laughs> He loses this. I think he does. This he Regis denies the emissary. Tank. It's Deny over. <laughs> it's actually, it's actually <laughs> over. Are you kidding me? You're humble. Yeah, he's lost. No, no, he, he's, no, he's lost. He's, he's, he's lost. over. Oh my oh god. My gosh. <laughs> well, wow. all right. I think that has successfully answered my question. Where did the points come from round three when you're in this position and it's Regis eating something that your opponent put back in the deck? <laughs> I can't believe that happened. Wow. Regis MVP to eating up that. What did he eat? Like the, the Guardian Knight, right? Oh, my God. What a game. Okay, so he's not out of it just yet. <laughs> Two to one. All right. All right. All right. Not bad. Oh, Hellfinder is successfully fending off the... Uh, sweep from Bitsy, but my god, what a game. Hey, right. it's... The coin flip made a problem. There, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, I think, I, I'm hoping I don't have to see it hovered over, and do I... 
<laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> Do you really, can you expect the coin flip to, at this point, you're like, man, four times in a row, you know what, just every time coin flip, every time bring it. Like, I'm going to just go first every single time. And once again, Bitsy is just nailing, like, I think Bitsy's greatest strength this entire lineup has simply been winning the coin flip and having Siri in his opening hand. Like, that is just such a powerful combo every time. Every single time. That is so nuts. We see uh, an Imperative Fog there dropped out on the Imperial Brigade, and well, he may just go for the Ambassador there. I mean, if he's able to generate that huge strength gap, oh, but he has to go for, oh, maybe going for the Calvate here is going to make him, oh, wow. Okay, okay, Hellfinder, who, which pissy, which pissy, which gypsy that you piss off, man, because what the hell is this? Like, double Vic of our novice and a, and a Bork, like, damn. And the Wyvern coming down to perfectly kill off the uh, Emperor yeah. Brigade. There was no possibility of getting... Like, he can possibly pull another one out from the uh, Emissary, but I was liking your Ambassador plays a little bit more there. Um, banking on the Emissary, or the Imperial Brigade, to tank at least one more hit of that fog before it hit too much more. But, hey, if his luck was going poorly before, that is a pretty nice sequence off of the Emissary, pulling out the remaining two Vigilvar Novices and another Imperial Brigade. Yeah, very nice for him, actually. Uh, getting that ace strength. Uh, on the board, gonna save the Imperial Gomes from thinking the, like, the last uh, devastating hit there, and they're gonna stick around on the board, it seems, at least for a while. As we see Bitsy with double Sailor Harpy, one of them gonna drop down here. Triple Sailor Harpy is opening hand. If he manages to win this first round, the question is, how how is he gonna deal with Jennifer Conjure? Because uh, we haven't spoken too much about Jennifer Conjure here. Uh, Ox can deny two of the eggs if he wants to, but it seems like he's gonna hold on to it to see if he has a more valuable target for it. There's no rush in it, really. As this ambassador can disperse his strength quite a bit, which is nice. Uh, I like him targeting one of the golems there. And got to give him an eight strength lead. Like I'm it. actually not sure how I feel about the golem target there. You're going against monsters, and you're going against monsters with Lano Harpies. You can kind of figure that BTM is probably in the deck. Uh, so the more one strength units you can keep on your side of the board, the better. Uh, but you're right about that, Jennifer Conjurer. There's simply not a lot of ways of breaking up that value from... Uh, Bitsy's side of the board, we can see a possible caretaker onto Imperial Brigade just to have some additional ticks. Uh, that is this. No, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but is this Yen Khan a tech for monsters? Because most monster decks don't tend to have very high strength value units. You know, like they tend to have a lot of. Because a, a lot of monster decks actually play. A lot of Dagon decks I've seen play Bork, actually, or uh, Villain to Tremens. So this could be. A tech option for him expecting this matchup to be quite prevalent and because right now that Yencon can definitely translate into a tremendous amount of value like especially looking at Bitsy's hand like how can he stop this no you might be right uh, not only for the monster matchup but uh, just line with that villain Tretmer for some additional scorching as well true, um, true and speaking of that villain Tretmer still on the top of the deck so we get to take another peek at him but Your humble these emissary Yitkan's working out fairly well. Um, simply by keeping all of this strength nice and low, and we do see... Uh, here I am happy to leave the two Imperial Golems at one strength, just in case of that BTM. You kind of want to try and stack the odds in your favor as much as you can. Yeah, uh, I, I like that approach. That Nas against Stanenberg was very, very strong, and it's going to force Siri out of Bitsy. Uh, I think this is clearly not an offensive Siri. I think you clearly pass here 100%. Yeah, that's that's easiest, the easiest pass of his life. Not even a water hack last year is even close to enough to what he needs. That is a very, very dominant uh, round one there by Hellfinder, even with that awkward start at the beginning and him losing the coin flip for the fourth time in a row. Don't matter. Yen Khan putting the massive work there, and look at that carryover, son. <laughs> like that's massive. Well, if you want to talk Good about thing you awkward, won that round. We've got a series still in Bitsy's opening hand. Simply the seven gold strength and nothing else. There's no way of triggering her effect anymore. Yep. And look at look at who who has Cantrilla and Siri in his hand. Hellfinder here gonna find a very powerful round to to really pressure for someone. It's another uh, weather clear. Which is very nice for him. As we see Bitsy drop the uh, Siri right there. 35 points on his board. Uh, but points, with Bork, you we, don't really we, mind. We both know points don't matter. Um, but at this point, we're looking at... I, obviously, we can see both hands and we can, you know, kind of 
guess at what our players are reading from each other, but if Hellfinder opts to stay in this round just a little bit longer, he's about to hit some very powerful cards being stolen from uh, Bitsy's hand. Uh, Bitsy's hand is very stacked at this point. The Fog probably being the next least valuable card, but after that we're starting to hit uh, Water Hags, uh, Crones, Caretakers, Woodland Spirits. Like This is going to be a, a gut check, I think, on Hellfinder on how much more does he really want to try and bleed from his opponent this round. I mean, knowing the matchup, you know that they always preserve the, cor uh, the Crones for the last round, right? They preserve that for... The last power plays so you do perhaps want to push him a little bit more but you also have uh, villains of dramatic in your hand so it really depends it depends on what exactly his strategy is for the final round here because his deck is not the typical north card deck you see with the Yennefer conjure attack right there even though some of his options are obviously more standard uh everything in his hand is actually very standard but he's really thinking about it here really uh debating about whether to push him or not to push and he is going to drop as a year it seems Gonna get Roach back to the deck and also fish for the Nazca Standard Bearer. Very nice, very nice. Getting that weather clear in his deck again, so we could potentially pull for it once more. As well, we see the his, uh, odds of drawing that uh, Nazca Standard Bearer, there are only uh, three bronzes remaining in the deck. Roach will come out as soon as the uh, villain Trap Mirth hits the board, but the Ambassador, uh, Nazca Standard Bearer, and Imperial Brigade only things left. Uh, a decent, actually, this might have been what he was looking for for that uh, drawing out uh, this round just a little bit longer, is denying the Foglets from coming back in round three yep. with the next Fog. Yeah, that Ox is excellent. That Ox is absolutely excellent. Going to take away uh, two of the three Foglets for the next round. We're going to see the Water Hag uh, being dropped by uh, Bitsy. Bitsy preserving his more high-end power cards as we the Woodland Spirit. But the Woodland Spirit has been severely weakened here. Taking four strength out of the a card from the next round is very valuable, especially considering he has both Dagon and uh, Woodland. I guess after, I guess that's what he was waiting for. He was waiting to get that Ox to hit the Foglet so he didn't have to deal with them in round three. And now he feels that Bork will be enough to carry him over this round. It's going to be very interesting. Well, not only Bork, but double Nausicaa standard bearers in hand. I believe that's exactly what you're looking for. You're just looking yep. at the rest of the deck. You that's don't clean. really care about the uh, other ambassador, but... You've already taken care of two of the Foglets. Are you really that concerned about uh, them coming out again? Or are you just concerned about losing some of your more of your own strength? And I'm also curious, when is this villain Treadmirth going to hit the board? It's currently doing towards the eight and the sixes. And he does have a decent amount of ways of staggering the rest of his strength as well. What, I, what I'm curious about is how he's going to use Peter. Like, what, what, what plans that he has for Peter here? Because Peter is going to share the strength with the Crones. And he also needs to be careful about what he buffs. Yeah, like he's thinking about dropping that, but he's also at the same time be like, if I buff that to six, uh, I line it up with the Crones as well. He's going to die anyway. So he's going to opt to drop Villain to early on. So he can then, yeah, he wants to play all his weather clear and then drop Peter for a, a nice swing in his favor. That's what he's going to opt to do here. He's going to let he's gonna let Roach take one more hit, and then he's going to potentially buff it with Peter up to uh, a total of eight strengths. So getting a, a 13 strength swing with Peter I'm, there. I think that's his plan. I'm actually not sure if this villain Dreadmore is early or not. We have see only three cards remaining in Bitsy's hand, uh, two cards plus the leader. Unless one of those happens to be a uh, Frightener, I believe, is the spy. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, we're going to see Bitsy just play out his remaining cards with zero way of interacting with this villain Dreadmore. Oh yeah, no, I, I meant early for like him, but yeah, it's definitely the, the right moment to drop him there. But he was opting to go for the for the Nazca bear, but I, I like that idea of preserving Peter for like the final round. And that Arch Griffin, he's forced to drop it, and that's just, that's actually not bad because it saves the crones there. And he can drop the bear now and save up that, uh, I mean, he's going to have to buff that anyway. So what I said before doesn't really come, you know, it, it's well, not it, as strong as... It drops as the Lucy. strength value down from uh, three to six, which could be important. We do see Peter still in hand, possibly able to... Uh deal with the uh, Arch Griffin if he really wanted to sacrifice Peter just to get that extra six strength off from removing both crones. I'm not sure that's uh, mathematically the correct play, but if you really something, wanted to get rid of him, he could get rid of him. Something you could argue for is going for Biting Frost on the, the Seas Row, dropping down the crone to seven and the other two crones to five, and that way you could threaten so much more of a clear with Bork. We could see that from him. As he's, he's right now, he's only clearing here, but he has he could he could go for the frost on on the seas row, and uh, try to line that up with the Arch Griffin. You know what I mean? And uh, get the uh, the Bork to proc off and hit those two uh, the sevens and the fives, and get like a massive clear there. 
But it seems it's like he's not, not going to have to do that. that. Is that worth losing your only buffable units on the board at that stage? That's true. That's true. That's true. He couldn't afford that because of that. Yep. And, I mean, he still has the Tremors, right? He can still just uh, nuke him, potentially. But now is 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 he's, he's really far behind here, though. Is is Villain to Tremors going to be enough here? Well, Villain to Tremors is like, currently looking at a 15-point swing in his favor. He's only really three points behind. Uh, it looks a lot more dire than it is. Uh, Peter, yeah, for true. an additional nine, uh, we have... Uh, yeah, sure, that's true. And Van, and Van Hemar with a the, with the nuke as well. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep definitely. Definitely. What is the best steal for Bitsy here? There's, I don't think any. We have to look or, at the graveyard. Yeah. Uh. I don't think these really give us many more. options. Yeah. Like, what? What could be the best? Like, you, you could take. Cause you, you can't take Azir because it's just well. You can technically like it'll sponge the hit, I guess. You could turn. Hmm. Just to put those foglets back in the deck and. Play another fog, except you're out of cards. All right, ten and eight, and you have uh, yeah, this this it's over, this is over. Yep, yeah, that wasn't enough. Van Hamar nuke and Peter for an additional uh, four, uh, ten value, I believe. Is the most you can get out of them. Yep. I mean, going to be somewhat of a close score, but definitely a victory for Hellfinder here, bringing it back to two to two after that set of uh, games, losing the coin flip every single time. Don't matter. Don't matter. He, he came out on top and is one win away from pulling a reverse sweep over Bitsy. As we're looking at Bitsy's hand now, and he's bringing the dwarves. The first Goyatel we have seen this tournament thus far. Um, I don't know what to expect. This is this just a pure dwarf deck, and it looks to be we've got uh, well, we've got the dwarfs, we got some potions, and we've got uh, well, more dwarfs. That looks like a dwarf deck to me. <laughs> I, I think it's safe to assume that as there's the uh, Elven War Dancer, which he replaced into, very unfortunate for him, as we see, I mean, very clear mulligans here for uh, Hellfinder as he gets rid of the Imperial Golem. After that, he goes for Roach. And this matchup, well, he's going to have to go for the Bearer first, and then after that, uh, replace Roach. As that's a pretty flexible hand as well. Hellfinder, I think and... you should just expect it at <laughs> oh, this point. Oh, God. Oh, man. Uh, but... What, we what do, do you see Siri in the opening hand. I don't know. Hellfinder, whatever rituals you are performing at the beginning of your uh, tournament sessions, they're taking you far, but you're paying a heavy price. <laughs> but on the uh, Villain Treadmirth, I think one of the... You're there. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. The, the Villain Treadmirth, one of the uh, definitely better mulligans, I think, coming from Hellfinder here. It's going to do a very good job of helping to shut down these dwarves from uh, really... Yeah. Can, if they get too big, they're just going to get burned. But it's going to be an interesting game of, you know, given these hands, do you risk, like, are, if you're a Hellfinder, do you think that you can straight up outpower a dwarf deck? Or do you think that you need to rely on the villain Tretmer to help get you through this round? And it's two very different lines of plays, and his hand can kind of go either way. Both end, uh, ambassadors kind of leaning towards the, hey, I need to just have more power than this guy. But we do see the Gigni in Bitsy's hand as well, able to shut down uh, all of that strength if it starts getting a little out of hand. So this could be an interesting game, an interesting round of who can scorch their opponent for the most uh, hurt. Yeah, like not only can he push him hard with uh, proactive plays with the ambassadors right there, as he did, he just pulled that before. Oh no, never mind. He has the ambassador as well. Okay, this time he did, and then goofy. Yeah, very strong lead. Like as you said, he's he may be able to actually up muscle the dwarves here, but on top of that, he has that Van Himar in the back. When this round does uh, reach a certain point, that's also such a strong swing in his favor there. As we see the high tempo Groover there pulling Saskia, Roach, and Jarpen Ziggurin out of the deck, getting him back to getting up to 42 strength. He had like such a, he was like so far behind, and now he's back at it completely. As the first emissary drops, there's another Vicarvar Novice, and here goes the chain again, going for the other Vicarvar Novice, bringing the emissary again, and another Impair Brigade. And because of the prior buff of the Ambassador, they are not lined up for Igni by any means. So Igni can be a very powerful swing here, but it seems like he's only going to be able to target the uh, strongest in pair brigade. As the second Makam enters the board, and you know, even though we see some high tempo plays from Calvay, uh, you know, Bruver is not too far behind here. 
Uh, that's one thing that uh, dwarves can definitely do is keep up with tempo, especially, and that's where their threat comes from. Not only are they keeping up with your tempo, but they're making sure that they stick as much of that value over to next round as well. Yeah, um, yeah. But the second M, or I'm sorry, the second and final emissary coming out and pulling out the final uh, Imperial Brigade, Hellfinder is geared up to go as deep as he needs to for this round and just try and outvalue his opponent. But this Gigni is representing a much stronger, uh, more immediate swing than the Villain Trentler. Villain Trentler is going to require a lot of setup, and he really needs to find the right timing on when can he use Villain Trentler to ensure that he doesn't hurt his own units. Doesn't seem like this round is the one he's going to aim to do that, because even if he gets Ignite, he still has uh, stronger units than his opponent with the buffed up Imperial Golem and the two uh pair of brigades right there now it's gonna be interesting because he was thinking of dropping siri there but ultimately he's gonna opt to go for cantrella and pick up a nice and premium kahir and look like it feels bad man you know when cantrella actually provides you with strength <laughs> like that's that's nuts that was a four strength cantrella no, all those that's, Imperial Brigades just sapping as much strength as possible just being like hey like uh, uh, you're supposed to get 10 here but I'm just going to take my share. Down but, goes uh, Old Gear to provide even more carryover strength the next round. This is going to be very tight. Van Hamar could actually potentially threaten with a Frost on the range row and get some insane value if you think about it. Uh, that is a nice threaten, but we do see double uh, first lights in the hand yep. of Fitzy. Again, I'm not sure if I, I like the, on the one hand, the placement of the Cantarella to ensure that there's not that much carryover value. It does separate out so that the Thunderbolt Potion is in hand. There's no way of hitting both of the dwarves without repositioning them. Um, but at the same time, it's such an odd place where he doesn't have the means for this round of dealing with the carryover value. And that might end up hurting him more than he is aware. Because Interesting even if point out there. It's just, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but he, he opted to not go for Peter. He, he, he didn't want to... He wants to preserve it for later. Uh, he, he had the option to drop Peter and deny one of the dwarves there, like Jarpen Zergren or one of the Mac uh, defenders there, but he opted to actually go for the weak Nausicaa uh, standard bearer instead. Guess, guess he, he feels like he doesn't need it for this round, basically. I don't know. We're looking at a 28-point value Gigni. Just sitting there ready to be like, I, I see you, Empire Brigade. You're going down. Um, yeah. But again, this I, I keep bringing it back to this villain Trentworth because even best case scenario, and he manages to line up and hit every single dwarf for next round, you're still looking at going down an additional two cards just to be able to get that effect to go off. That timer is a very real concern. It is. We see uh, Rally picking up a Mac M guard there. Going to target one of the Brazilian units. Uh, gonna buff that up. He still managed to keep up with him, and he still has Geralt Igni to threaten that, but it's time for Van Hammer to go down. He sees the the clear skies. He's expecting him to not have another one. He goes for the Biting Frost, which deals quite a bit of damage, but Bitsy does have the second clear skies there available for him to be able to prevent that from basically solidifying the round for Hellfinder, as Hellfinder seems like he's gonna drop Siri here. Yeah, it's the proper moment I, to do so. I think this is a good time for that, and that uh, Van Hamar managed to hit i believe 12 units unless my math was wrong so he really only lost he could have potentially had four more value if he had gone for the uh um tremors instead but so many units just chilling on the melee row i mean i, I would have gone for the frost there if i see clear skies I don't, I don't expect my opponent to have another one in his hand at that point so that, that I, th I think that was the proper play but he definitely uh, gets shut down there, so props to Bitsy there. Igni goes down, but Igni, even though that was a huge swing, oh, this Siri, oh my god, this Siri hurts so much! That ward answer in his hand is so useless! It could reasonably He's gonna go for the, the, go for the tie. He's gonna go for the tie, yeah. I mean, I mean, you you kind of have to, right? Like, you, you, you need to capitalize on that. If he goes for this, like, can you afford the tie? I mean, you do have Bork, right? But... Borg technically does deal with both, uh, like, all the carryovers because they're lined up, but he just needs to draw um, one more dwarf, and he kind of negates that. Do you do, do you go for the tie here? This is very interesting. I, this is such a stalemate. With both of the carryover dwarfs at 13, I don't know. Like, it's such a tough choice for Hellfinder because do you risk spending the Villain Trenton Mirth here? You will secure the round, and then literally all that carryover value at 36, if I'm not mistaken on my math, does not matter because you can simply pass. 
Um, but if you pass now, take that tie, you are able to use the villain trap with full his floor, full hit for his full effect next round. And there may be a possibility that that strength value gets staggered. I think that if, if, I, was, uh, if I was in Hellfinder's shoes, I play the villain trap if I take the round. Oh, it's tough though. This is so tough. Oh, he's gonna pass. Oh, he's going for the tie. Oh boy. Oh, here we go, boys. Wow, he's carrying all that. He's going for the tide. He's carrying over all that strength. Oh, my God. He does have the villain Treadmirth currently able to knock it all down. The Peter off the top, he knew it was there. Uh, it's really going to come down to if Vitsy can stagger the strength, and those two draws are not what he's looking Jennifer. for. Well, that Jennifer can line it up, though. But at the same time, she? okay, so, it's so only, he's only getting two chicks off of it. There's not enough cards. Oh, not enough turns. You're right. You're right because he has to play Bork first. Oh no! <laughs> oh, oh, that thunderbolt and he potion! And finds dude. the thunderbolt potion to stagger oh! the strength. Oh, it's over. Well, he has Peter though. Wait, wait. Okay, let, let, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let, let's see. Okay, so we got a double scorch effect here plus Peter. But that's a total of 12, 16 strength, uh, plus the two zaps, 18. Can, can you act? That's, if you're pissing, not... where do you even play this Thunderbolt potion? But it, the, yeah, like that's... Oh, man. <laughs> Is there a case to be made to play that on the old gear, denying the full value just to try and prevent any additional damage from the villain Dreadmer? Oh, I I don't know. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. Like we 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 got we got to do big yellow dragon math. I think that might have been the best option for him. Did, that if we're thinking of just insane reads, had he played that on the uh, left instead, they would have had the dwarf in the middle. Uh, if he played it for the full effect, hitting the dwarf, it would have been at fourteen strength, the same as the. Um, that's true. That's so true. That's so true. Hey, yeah. Peter could have denied. So this is okay. So 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 he he applies Peter here. He he gets rid of twenty four. Yeah. There's, there's no. He can't catch up with you. He can't catch up. He, even, even with Peter, no. There's too much power. There's too much strength. Ogier actually contributes quite a bit too. He, even with that Macam defender uh, top deck here, I don't think Peter's enough. But okay. He's really he's really calking here. He so he can burn. He can burn 30 strength away. He can burn 30... He can drop in... Wait, he drops him down to 25. No, but it's just not... A, wait, is it enough? I, I don't even know at this point, dude. I... My math is so bad right now! <laughs> Alright, well, we... Wait, now the wait, decisions is, is it my yeah. one? Is it by one? <laughs> no, by two! Oh! Ooh. Wow! What a game! <laughs> oh, man! I thought it was my one for a second, but 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 Jennifer didn't proc again. Oh wow, <laughs> GG.